Who would prevail in a combat between the polar bear, the northern lands monarch, and the mythical barbarian lion? An African lion subspecies formerly found in North Africa, particularly the Atlas Mountains, is known as the Barbary lion, also known as the Atlas lion, and it is now thought to be extinct in the wild. The great white northern bear, often known as the polar bear or the white bear, may be found all over the Arctic. In their respective ranges, both were and are apex predators. What do you think would happen if these two powerful animals had to engage in combat? Let's investigate. Let's start by discussing their size and appearance. Once upon a time, the Barbary lion was believed to be one of, if not the largest subspecies of lions and member of the African felidae. The manes of male Barbary lion museum specimens were said to be extraordinarily dark and long, reaching over the shoulder and down to the belly. Stuffed males are 7.8 to 9.2 feet long from head to tail, 2.4 to 2.8 m. A hunter from the 19th century stated that significant accounts of the weight of wild males ranged from 600 to 660 pounds, 270 to 300 kilograms. Because of the significantly lower temperatures in the Atlas Mountains than in other parts of Africa, particularly in the winter, Barbary lions may have grown lengthy manes. The largest carnivorous land mammal in the world is the polar bear. They have a very short tail that extends about 7 to 8 feet, 2.1 to 2.4 m, from the tip. A big man could weigh more than 1,700 pounds, 771 kilograms. Many of the physical modifications made by the polar bear help it stay warm and survive in its frigid environment. The bear's exterior coat of fur is hollow and reflects light, giving it a white tint that helps it blend in with its surroundings. The polar bear's skin is actually black below its white coat. The substantial layer of fat that lies beneath the skin on polar bears also serves as insulation, retaining heat. Polar bears can swim and walk on ice thanks to their strong legs and broad, flattened feet with some webbing between the toes. Find out if these creatures could have crossed paths in the wild now. Countries along the Atlas Mountain Range, particularly the Barbary Coast, were home to barbarian lions. They were much fewer by the middle of the 19th century. The remaining Tunisian survivors had perished by 1890. In the 1970s, it was believed that Barbary lions had vanished from the wild at the turn of the 20th century. However, a careful examination of hunting and sighting reports reveals that the final Barbary lion was killed in the Moroccan Atlas Mountains in 1942. Up until the 1950s, Barbary lion sightings were reported from Morocco and Algeria, and tiny remnant populations may have persisted in isolated regions until the early 1960s. All the way to the North Pole, polar bears are primarily found in regions north of the Arctic Circle. Alaska, Canada, Russia, Greenland, and a few Norwegian-owned northern islands are all home to polar bears. Sea ice that develops above open waters is essential for polar bears. They will stay on land if there isn't any sea ice. Polar bears are skilled swimmers and, if necessary, can travel vast distances by water between the beach and the sea ice. During times of ice breakdown, polar bears frequently swim between floating ice islands. Polar bears place more value on multi-year, permanent ice than seasonal, yearly ice that melts and recovers. Although multi-year ice is getting harder to find, it will probably persist longer in the northwest Canadian archipelago of islands than in Alaska or off the coast of Russia. Let's check out how and what they hunt now. All big cats are carnivores who like taking on big prey. They consume Barbary stag and gazelle in the Atlas Mountains, as well as red deer and wild boar in other locations. They would attack domestic livestock on farms, such as sheep and cattle, when these became scarce. 
This usually led to a deadly clash with people who were determined to defend their way of life. Sadly, their hunting techniques were never thoroughly documented. Nevertheless, it is believed that, like the Asiatic lion, they would strangle their target and share the carcass among their pride. In contrast to other bear species, polar bears consume virtually exclusively meat. They mostly eat ringed seals, but can occasionally eat bearded seals as well. When hunting seals, polar bears wait for them to breathe underwater on the sea ice. The polar bear will bite or grasp the seal as it approaches the surface and drag it onto land so it may feast. They also eat the carcasses of whales and walruses. Although polar bears will seek for alternative food sources like as bird eggs, none of them are abundant enough to support their high body bulk and numerous populations. Another significant food source in most locations is seal pups that are born and nurtured in Arctic ice dens. By using smell and other indications to locate these burrows, the polar bear charges through the ceiling to seize the baby seals. Finally, we will focus on how they behaved in the wild before the decisive conflict. It is believed that the breeding season for Barbary lion males and females took place in January. They gave birth to one to six cubs during their 110-day gestation cycle in captivity, with three to four being the most typical number. Rosettes that were quite black coated the cubs. Up until the age of two, the cubs remained with their mother. After that, they parted ways. Polar bears are lone animals. They might compete with one another if there is an opportunity to scavenge after a seal is killed. Usually, the smaller bear will run away in such circumstances. Polar bears are capable of diving underwater and holding their breath for up to two minutes while pursuing prey. The majority of their time is spent lying down, sleeping, or waiting. Usually, the remaining time is spent moving either swimming or walking, moving food or stalking prey. After contrasting these two predators, let's find out who would prevail in a fight. Polar Bear Against Barbary Lion Similar to any imaginary animal fight, a number of elements, like his size, agility, strength, who attacks first, and who is fortunate enough to sustain a critical injury, might affect the outcome. Barbary lions have been known to engage and subdue cape buffaloes, which are even heavier and larger than polar bears, without the aid of the rest of the pride, despite the fact that polar bears have the advantage of size and raw power. Even though this is an uncommon event, it shows the animal's might. Due to their outstanding physical dexterity and agility, lions, members of the cat family, can move with greater flexibility, speed, and agility. The polar bear, on the other hand, is renowned for having incredible levels of both upper body strength and a lethal bite that can actually break bones. The significant quantity of muscle and fat on the bear gives it more endurance than a lion as well. Many brown and polar bears have been killed by lions during cage fights. Lions have killed more bears than bears have killed lions. Overall, it's anyone's guess how the war will turn out. It all depends on who strikes it fortunate with the crucial blow. The chances are overwhelmingly in favor of the bear, but I think a dangerous animal like a lion has a chance if it can flank and wear down the bear with quick attacks and bleeding wounds. The bear simply needs one successful hit to prevail. Despite its size and weight, cats are always hazardous. An adult polar bear would not be threatened by a lion. If the bear was smaller, I think the lion would have a chance, or maybe two out of ten, otherwise the bear would win this fight. That is all for now, thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.